the things that I see, you. things, yeah. Okay. Yes. Ah, so the first, the song that we, we, we saw, uh, it's about your mom. Now, yeah. as it was playing, you're telling me that, that you play that song for every interview. And that song you did seven, seven, seven years, years ago. Yeah. Seven, many, seven years ago. Yes. And you can see the transformation without dread now with dread. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see this transformation over the seven yeah. years. And so wh why? Wh what's, what's so important about this song? Uh, Mama, I made it is a song that I recorded straight after high school mm. and uh, it was like when you're in high school I think most people usually say that for you to complete the f complete high school uh, you actually need to make a lot of sacrifices and uh, according to the statistics mm -hmm. most people usually don't go through form two I think it's true so yeah. I think I was very happy to pass my exams and also mm -hmm. felt like I actually made it through oh, high school okay. and uh, Apart from that, there are some honorable mentions in the song mm. uh, where I usually praise my mom. And uh, since she's a pillar in my life, and actually she's the one who has believed in me in my music career for um, ever since I started. Since started. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if I had my phone, if I could call her right now, uh, her skis are tune is the song. Wow. Yeah, ever. <laughs> so I think uh, it's a special song to me. That's why I say in every interview I usually go, mm. or in every show that I usually go to perform. It's usually in the, in the playlist. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Big up to mom. I mean, I, she's a proud mother wherever she is. I'm sure she's watching. Yes? Yeah, actually she's watch. watching. Ah, big up to mom. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So from that song, how, how, how was the journey like? You were seven years in. Uh, actually, I think this song came with a lot of Kismat. Ah. Yeah. Uh, immediately I released this song. Mm -hmm. I featured in a show together with Calligraph Jones, Juakali. Okay. And um, after that, I was featured in the Bombo La Sana. Uh, it was the first, first, first ever show, mm -hmm. which took place in Zitek University. Wow. So I think after that, that's when I received my first payment in music. That was from Goma and Skiza. Mm -hmm. So things it started building up from there. Yeah, you. it opened up a lot of doors. So it was a major inspiration that actually mm -hmm. music is a career that you can actually pursue and uh, make a living out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you talk about music as a career that can pursue, you have different things that you're doing. I know you're not doing music yeah. uh, independently, wholly, you know, you're yeah. not just focused on music, but you have other things going on, and you'll tell us about it. Yeah. But still on this song, you also mentioned that you had uh, everyone appearing on that video are your friends. So yeah. are, are they still your friends? Do they know when you are Drop off along the way? Uh, if I could point out, um, uh, I don't know if the video is playing right now. Um, uh, we don't have it on screen. Okay, okay, um, okay. I can say from the video, mm -hmm. uh, one of the guys there actually we are now neighbors, mm. and we have known each other since primary school. Uh, the guy, only the guy, is the one who left because he went to work in the US. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And all of them are still in my circle. Like we meet for oh, birthdays and wow. things like that. Yeah. I mean that's that's good. Great friendship. You are a keeper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you are too cool. So, ah, with the world from Bishdangu, you know, yeah. all that kind of. So it, it tells a good story at least. Yes. Okay, so from all your songs over the seven years, w uh, what has been, or I, w I want to ask, which is your best song from all the songs that you have written? My best song? Mm -hmm. I think all of them are my best songs. Please, you'll have to, I, I knew you'll say that, but... Because, you know, uh, there's one thing about artists. Um, <laughs> when I release a song today, and then I send it to you, mm -hmm. once you listen to it and you tell me that the song is good, I'll tell you, kule <laughs> That's better than the other one. We are usually like that. We, also, we always think that the next song is better than the it's other better. song. Yeah, okay. so we, But at the end of the day, when you listen to your songs, they're all good. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Could I know um Ulendika like does any of your song apart from this one, yeah, mm -hmm. I made it Mama, you have a story behind it. Yeah. Do you have any other from all the songs that you've written from your albums that has a story to it, maybe from a personal point of view? Yeah, um I think uh as we keep growing up, uh, I think there are things that we go through in life. Mm -hmm. Uh especially loss. So uh yeah. as we kept on as I kept on coming up, we started losing some, losing some friends mm -hmm. in some, let me say, sickness, some strategies. Tra tra mm -hmm. uh, then there was the time that during COVID, I lost a friend. Oh, and uh, so I wrote a song dedicated not to him, but also all the friends that I lost back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. So that is a special song. Um, 
there's another one I, hmm, this one makes sense since when you know once you're dating uh -huh. you, you should dedicate a song to someone that you're dating <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um <laughs> we won't say her ex but that time <laughs> that <laughs> that time she was not the ex girlfriend that time yeah okay but at uh, the end of the day you can still break up and the song still remains on the <laughs> on the platform since it's doing too well. Um, yeah. well. There's that and there's also I've read also I've also dedicated a song to my to my fans. Mm -hmm. I think I it's also is gonna play sometime yeah. soon. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll see what song our producer chooses from the mixes with the different varieties that we have there. Yeah. And uh, now get, getting back to or t switching a bit to what you do apart from music. Tell us did you get on a fanyanga? Okay, um, also the CEO of Alpha Digital Marketing Agency. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story behind this also still comes from the music side. Mm. Um, coming up as a musician, uh, I think for you to get major deals, you need some connections. Like for you to feature as a main event in a show, mm -hmm. to go for the big interviews like or 254 or, ten over, or 10 over 10 or there's the turn up. Mm -hmm. I think for you to go places like that, you need to have major connections. And most of the time, you can be texting or calling or you reach out to someone on Instagram mm -hmm. and they usually just look away on your, on your messages. Like they don't read them or things it's like going, that. Oh. So um, I think at around 2018, I got, I got a job somewhere and it was actually an industry where I was the head of entertainment mm -hmm. at that place. So... Um, when you interact with most guys, they usually like, can you go for for Willie Paul? Can you go for Calligraph? Can you go for Major or something like that? So me being in that position at that moment, I will usually place a big show. I'll take mm -hmm. like two artists. I'll take someone like Calligraph or Asake, and then I will put uh, the main, the opening, the curtain raisers. I'll put most people who are underground artists. Mm. Yeah. So um. The main idea came from there. Okay. Then as it grew, I started setting up events, mm -hmm. not only for for the big artists now, not for the underground artists, mm -hmm. which the major events are, there's one which is called Badfest. Badfest. Yeah, Badfest. I think you should check it out. It's a big event now uh, in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes place usually every three months. The last one took place in December 20, 24th. 24th December. So the next yeah. one is supposed it's to take in place March. in March. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, from there, I, uh, Alpha Digital actually started as only a marketing agency, uh, but in terms of marketing, it was mm -hmm. managing artists. artists. Yeah, okay. managing artists. Then um, I started meeting some other people. I expanded to managing artists and models. Then uh, me also being a media student, I majored in advertisement and marketing. Mm -hmm. So I'm also good in photography, videography, film production, oh, content creation. Been handy. Yeah, so uh, apart from me, being a manager, I started now expanding it to be a whole business. So it, <coughs> it consists of a whole package that is photography, videography, mm -hmm. there is content creation, there is script mm -hmm. writing, there is graphic design, there is the management side, there is the PR consultation side, and wow. all that. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, that's amazing. And how yeah. is it doing? When did you when did you uh, start this? And how is it uh, going for you? It was founded in February 2023. 2023, yeah, so last, last year. year. Last year, mm -hmm. uh, That's when I decided to, I was, I was at a very big company in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So after some time, I decided to venture out on myself. And that's when I, we started with <coughs> only six employees. <coughs> wow. Yeah, who are mostly my friends. Mm -hmm. But then after that, I started getting professional people and advices from different people. And then we grew from there to now. Wow, look, look at that. I mean, that's amazing. A good story to tell. Yeah. For, for someone who's um, wondering, how, how do you start? You know, you've told your journey, <coughs> what inspired you, you know, how you advanced. But how do you start in terms of getting the resources? And, mm. you know, starting is usually a challenge for many people for because me, they think yeah. of the money involved. Like, hey, in that was an aquarium, what's a tuning watch and watch and I try next year, next year, and I try next year, you know. Yeah, uh, actually, when I started Alpha Digital, uh, most people that I started working with, um, they all thought that they were getting salaries. From <laughs> I the, love how you put yeah, it. They all thought. They were getting salaries from <laughs> the different paid. gigs that we were doing. Uh, but in short, I was getting it from my own own account because I needed. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, okay. Ah, now I get it. So you were paying them salaries. Uh, yeah, I was paying them paying per week. 
Mm. Yeah. So uh, they started, uh, most of them thought that they were getting salaries from the things that they were doing because I could have a graphic designer mm -hmm. to design a graphic for a certain event which is coming up. Mm -hmm. But you know how usually clients are. Yeah, and to my show, to my show, to my show. But at the end of the day, um, starting is, also, is always a challenge since um, getting major clients is usually a, a big deal. And having people on a payroll, uh, they don't think about the, what the boss is doing. Mm -hmm. For them, it's but, like, uh, yeah, we deliver, uh -huh. we need, yeah, we deliver, we need the payments. So starting was a challenge. But as I said, I started with my friends. So there are people who could understand that you are now doing this and you're doing this. Mm. So, and apart from that, um, before I started, I did a lot of consulting. And me being in a corporate, corporate world, yeah, um, my boss was very close to me. And actually, he was a very open-minded guy. Anytime he would think of an idea, he would brainstorm it with me, since I was his second, I was the assistant. So um, I saw how he usually got clients. I saw how he handled the clients, I saw how he wrote reports, how he delivered and how. So me getting that from him, I used it to mm -hmm. build my own space and then that's how I grew from there. Okay, I love yeah. it. That you learned from the job you had. Yeah. You know, you're starting and you don't know where to start from. Yeah. You took your time to learn and you started with people who actually understand where you are. It's, you know, friends that understand. Yeah. It's actually a good thing. Apart from that, uh, before Trinidad Kwa Music, tenors, we can close up. Mm -hmm. You also do a lot of charity. Yeah. You, I, you are, I know you own the, you are the founder. Yeah, yeah. I'm a founder of uh, It's for Kids Foundation. It's for kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. so kid foundation. Uh, I think for me, uh, I'm that type of guy who, when I'm, I'm in a matatu, mm -hmm. I'd, let's say I'm coming to town and I'd see someone sleeping on the roadside. I won't think that that guy is going, <clears throat> I won't say that that guy is, is broke or something. For me, I'll see a human being and I'll see that this guy maybe needs help and this guy has a story. Mm -hmm. So it usually started like that, but then, I came to know that changing a mind of someone who's already grown is usually hard. hard uh, yeah, so it's usually to go to the kids who are still mature, who are still growing up, mm -hmm. and it's easier to actually give them hope that this it's possible for you to still become someone important even if you have disabilities or you come from a poor background or something like that. So it's for Kid Foundation. For now, we usually do visits to children who are undergoing autism or have the cerebral palsy okay. yeah, disability. So mm -hmm. our main beneficiaries are the missionaries of the poor children's home. Mm -hmm. It's located in Mihango. And uh, we have the RKF, the Rachel K Foundation. Mm -hmm. It's located in the US, but they have a major branch here in Nairobi. Oh, that, that's the one that deals with uh, autism and cerebral yeah. palsy. Yes. OK, wow, those are good initiatives. I mean. So you have you have music going on, you have your own company going on, yes. but you still have the, the humanity side of you, you know, giving back to the community by yeah. helping uh, those that are in need and, uh, you know, in the different kind of needs, the needy children and those that have special needs. Yes. How does this make you feel at the end of the day? Uh, <laughs> Maybe that you're, you're uh, making an impact. <laughs> uh, I won't say that it makes me feel... I won't talk about the feeling side, but I will <laughs> just say that you are playing a bigger part in the community. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I mean, okay. I'm sure it's some. It's you. You're proud of yourself, or maybe I. We are proud of you. Maybe they are proud of me. We me. are proud of yeah. you doing yeah. that. Yes. You know, it's a good thing that you're doing. So now back, back to back to now music. Yes. Uh, where do you where do you see yourself go, going? Do you see yourself moving with it further or? You want, you will get to some point and then you'll just uh, stick to the corporate business that you have. Uh, first of all, music is a universal language. And I think you can see there are times where artists mm -hmm. take breaks. Like, let's say, for example, Nyashinsky. There was a time he, will, he left the music industry for a very long time. Yeah. But after around 10 years, he came back and he's still dominating. So I think music is a thing that can go on for for the longest time. It has no retirement mm -hmm. uh, age or something. As long as you have good content. Uh, yeah. So as for me, the music side, I think in five years from now, I want to see myself in my owning my own record label. 
and having major artists recording there mm -hmm. and um, actually creating that creative space for them to express themselves to the, to the people. Other than, you know, most people usually perform the music in the studios and mm -hmm. to their friends only. Yeah. So I want to give them a chance for them to... To have the music out to the world. Yeah, to the world, yeah. You're a real entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so do you see yourself also doing collabo with uh, the renowned artists that are there? And if yes, then who? Um, there are some few people I have in mind, but uh, let me say in Kenya, I would like to work with someone like this is the Brooklyn Boys. The Brooklyn Boys. Yeah, Brooklyn Boys. Mm. Uh, so they sing gangeton, right? No, they do drill. Drill, oh, drill, yeah. Boys, oh, drill, okay. They do, do drill music. I think uh, once I'm talking of collabs, I usually go for people who I have the same vibe with, mm. in terms of hip hop and. Yeah, so uh, I think Brooklyn Boys will be on my to top of my list. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the people like the GTA, they also do drill. Okay. And there's Nene K, Nene K. And also, I also put Calgraf Jones there since he's also a hip hop artist. Calgraf. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and okay. all in all, he, he usually knows how to mix hit, hit music. Hit music, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interestingly enough. All right, so we look forward to, to listening to those collabs. Uh, mm -hmm. During your time, your music, your journey, what has been the favorite part of it all? Uh, I think um, the music videos. Doing the music videos, uh, mm -hmm. it's a good, it's a good, it's a good experience. Um, there is that feeling also when your music hits the first thousand views. Ah. There is that feeling when it hits the first ten thousand views, and there is that feeling when it's played on TV. Uh -huh. uh, so there are major parts uh, when you release some music where you get certain type, type of excitement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even when people can sing back to your music when while performing. performing. Yeah, that's also a very great feeling. Okay. Yeah, so there are major parts. Different things. Yeah, different, different things. things yeah. Uh, uh, take all your fancy when uh, yeah. it comes to your music. What, what has been your worst experience as an artist in the uh -huh. industry? My last experience, I'll say, there's a time we went for a show. Mm -hmm. um, I went with a friend, and then uh, they had booked Arrow Boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was the, the guest. Main, uh, yeah, he was the main artist, the main event. So, uh, so I went to Cut and Raise, but uh, we were Cut and Raise together with a friend. We had done a collab, mm -hmm. so it's the friend who had booked the show. So I uh, called me and told me, hey, I have this show, this place, can you come, we grace the stage and things like that. So when it came, when it was about the time to perform, and he was the first one to go on stage, I think our boy was, he said that he needed to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So he needed to come to the stage at that, that particular time. Ooh. Yeah, so you know, when after the main performance, there are usually no other performances. Yeah, yeah so actually, going for a show, not performing, it's the, worst, the, it's the worst, the worst feeling you can, can have, get. yeah. <laughs> I, I can imagine that's, yes. that's something. What do you think about the industry as it is now? People have different opinions, but I think the, the one that has been constant is that Kenyan music industry is not doing well. So what do you think about that? And if you think it's not doing well, what should be done? Uh, for me, I'd say the Kenyan music industry is actually growing. Because mm. um, by Term, in terms of growth, I'd say, I'll not speak on the music side only. I'd say in terms of the videos, the mm. way people are using cloud to drop their videos. Mm. Like now we have the people like Saudi Soul, their song, songs are played all over the world. So I'll say mm. it's growing, but at the end of the day, we also need to come up with a sound, mm -hmm. a Kenyan sound. Where you can say that this is like, we have Afrobeat, we have, mm -hmm. we have Afropop, we have a piano. We also need to come up with our own sound and we stick to it. Okay. Yeah, and all in all, we also need to support our Kenyan, Kenyan music. Because mm -hmm. uh, for now, you can go to a place like Tanzania and mm -hmm. you can ask them to name at least three Kenyan artists. <laughs> most of them only get to one. They'll say South Soul and Calligraph. Yeah, most of the time. <laughs> so I think uh, mm -hmm. as an artist, we need to study our grounds. Uh, we need to know that this music is the type of audience mm -hmm. you are trying to reach out to, and that way we can actually grow in okay. a, a steady way. 
you've said that we need to have our own music, like how you know, I'm a piano, South Africa has I'm a piano. But I think Kenya, we had Gengeton, but it was not embraced. What do you think about that? Or it's about uh, the language, the language is full, the language, you know, it's uh, th there's nothing to do with the language because <laughs> remember, there was a time there was this type of genre called um, not dance the language, the message, rather. Yeah, uh -huh. remember, there's a time when dance hall was the main, main music mm -hmm. in the world. And when you usually went to see the dancehall music videos, what was this? <laughs> we had the songs like Bend Over, we had the songs like, you remember? That? <laughs> but it was still music, you see? Uh -huh. So we cannot say that the content is bad, because at the end of the day, mm. music, something that makes you move, is good music. Okay, yeah. so whether it objectifies women or not, uh, still music. I won't, I won't talk about <laughs> something. No, but I'm just saying, <laughs> as, as long as it makes you move, <laughs> it's, 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 it's good music, it's okay. yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, finally, as we come to a close on this, what's, what's your uh, take on cloud chasing? Because we see artists, I think it cuts up, not just artists, even content creators, mm -hmm. you know, cloud chasing for one reason or the other, lab out something and then boom. Am I, when you have a music, new music out, you will look for something to get to attract people now to your YouTube bookshelf, cloud chase, and then when they are to I've dropped a single. Yeah, so what's your take on that? Me being a marketer, it's a good strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, something to divert the attention to to you. Mm, all yeah. Right. And uh, for me, cloud chasing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe sometimes you can find like this week, this thing is trending. Next week, something else will be trending. So for you to to trend for that, you actually need a strategy too. <laughs> To to yeah, to people. trend, yeah. So actually it's a good strategy. <laughs> so it doesn't spoil your brand, it's showbiz. Yeah. That's just how it is. As long after cloud chasing, the thing that you release is good. <laughs> it's uh, worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. Uh, okay, me, because I'm tired of cloud chasers, but it's fine. We show this trezor, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell us about Too Fancy. We want to play Too Fancy as we close. Uh, so tell us about Too Fancy. No, no, give us your social media handle. Uh -huh. Tell us about Too Fancy and then we play it as we... Um... You can find me at Macroys mm -hmm. in all handles, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Okay. It's Macroys everywhere. Yeah. Your music is, is your music, what streaming platform is it playing on? Uh, it's playing on YouTube, uh, the SoundCloud, Amdundo, and Spotify. Okay. Yes. So Macroys, M-A-C-R-O-Y-C-E. -E. -E, Macroys. Yeah. So get his music across all the platforms that we have anywhere, everywhere. All right, so Too Fancy, we want to play Too Fancy. Tell us about Too Fancy. Uh, too Fancy, I've uh, done the song with two other artists. There's Homeboy Carter, he's a Suna, she's a Sudanese hip-hop artist, and there's Jake. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was in high school, so actually getting him on the studio was a hassle. Oh. Yeah, so Too Fancy is a song that actually speaks about lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, just the name from it, like I'm Too Fancy. You can, oh. Yeah, so... Um, it was recorded back in 2020. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, I think we had some challenges during the recording, the recording of that song. Mm -hmm. First of all, finding the studio was, it was somewhere in Roisambu. So the person who was giving us directions was not good at it. <laughs> yeah. We found Fikem was a record, it was a challenge. It was a challenge. Mm. But then we did the song, we did the video. And uh, the dancers there are actually my cousins oh. in that video. Yeah, now, now they are big dancers in Kenya. Oh, okay. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing uh, them. Speaking on Homeboy Kata, he's also now a very big artist in Kenya. Like, he has just done a, a major international tour. Uh -huh. I think he's now back from, from Egypt or something. Uh -huh. He did a seven countries tour. Uh -huh. uh, for Jake, Jake is now a dancer. And as for me, I'm still an artist. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I love how you, you work with your people, yes. you know, una, una, una. you're all progressing, moving. That's great stuff. You want to big up someone before we get too fancy? Uh, I start with my mom. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is your camera. Uh, so, mama, I made it, first of Ooh. all. I want to big up to this uh, family. That's the record label I'm in right now. So big up to you, kid. I want to big up to my homeboys back at home. I won't mention names. So, mm -hmm. thanks, yeah. Awesome. So, too fancy it is. Thank you, Mark Royce, for coming on board. And we want to support your music, Mark Royce, everywhere, all right? So, let's listen to Too Fancy, and then we'll take a short break. We'll be right back with some more stuff for you. Here it goes.
Yeah, I'm too